What up, what up, Winbush here. And today we're gonna to be creating this effect all inside of Unreal Engine 5.5 using the motion design tools. But before we start, I wanna give a big shout out to Mr. Robitowicz. He's the one that actually helped me figure this out. But make sure you show him some support. I'm gonna leave his YouTube channel down below inside the description and in the comments. So getting into it, we're in Unreal Engine 5.5. And if we're looking inside the viewport, I'm gonna come over here to my outliner to activate this. But I just have an effector. And if I drag it through, you can see that not only does the clone actually shrink and move, we're actually changing the color materials inside of that as well. So this is new inside of 5.5 and it's really easy to set up. So let's start off with a brand new scene and build this out from scratch. So in order to build our project out from scratch, we're inside the Unreal Project Browser and I usually always come to film video live events. I'll make a blank slate right here and then down the lower right hand corner, I'm going to click create. So now we have a brand new project open. Let's activate the motion design tools. So we're going to come up here to edit, come down here to plugins and inside the search, we're just going to type in motion and that's going to bring up motion design experimental. We just want to turn this on and then we're going to hit yes and we're going to hit restart. Okay, now after it restarted, we can exit the plugin screen out. And then if I come over here, we should see motion design now right in the middle. Now, before I actually hit this, I'm gonna come over to my outliner and I'm just gonna delete everything in here. And now I'm gonna come up to motion design. I'm gonna left click on this. And this is gonna bring us into our motion design mode. So right here, we have the sequence or curves that's gonna pop up. We can actually exit out of this. And then over here where it says create defaults, we're just going to click on this and we want to spawn everything in here except for directional light. Like you can, if you want, but I'm going to leave that off. I'm just going to leave on the skylight and then I'm going to hit spawn. And now we have our scene set up. So now we're going to come over here to actors and we're going to click on cloners twice. So if I click on it once, we're going to see the red grid. If I click on it again, you got to click on it twice really fast. Now we have our cloner directly in the center of our viewport. So I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to exit out of my camera just so we can spin around it a little bit. Now let's get the cloner set up a little bit more. So we want to come back over here to my outliner, click on cloner, and we're just going to make everything five inside the grid. So the X, Y, and Z, I'm just going to make it five by five by five. This is just personal preference so we can see the effect happening a little bit better. And that's all we're going to do for that. So now let's get started with building out the material. As I said before, it's extremely easy to set up. So down here in the lower left hand corner, I'm going to open up my content drawer and I'm actually going to dock it to my layout so I don't have to keep popping it up like this. So now I can hit content drawer again and now we have it right here. So now I'm going to right click just in the open area and we're going to make a new material and I'm just going to call this one cloner, but you could call it anything that you want. And then I'm going to double click on it and that's going to bring up a material graph. So I can actually make this full screen so we can see it a little bit better. And let's zoom in here a little bit more as well. So let's build our base color. I still like to do it the old fashioned way, even though you could do it this way here. But if I hold down the three key on my keyboard and left click, that's gonna bring up this constant three vector and I could connect this to my base color. Now, if I double click this, we're gonna come up with the color wheel. So let's start with maybe green, somewhere along that line. So our base color is gonna be green. And now let's set up our secondary color, which is gonna be our admissive color. So what we wanna do is hold down the L key on our keyboard and we're gonna left click and that's going to bring up this LERP node. So again, for anybody that missed that, you're going to hold down the L key on your keyboard, left click, and that's going to bring in your LERP. So I'm going to delete this, and then I'm going to connect this into my emissive color. And now from here, I'm going to hold down the M key on my keyboard, and I'm going to left click, and that's going to bring up the multiply. So again, hold down the M key on your keyboard, left click, and that's going to bring up multiply. And we're going to take this multiply, and we're going to connect it to the B node right here. So the reason that we're doing this, because let's think about it as in this way. So our base color is going to be A, and then what we want it to turn into is going to be B. So that's why we put into the B node right here or the B slot. And then we're going to build this out even further. So now we're going to hold down the three key again on our keyboard. We're going to left click and that's going to bring up another constant three vector. Or if you want to do it the old fashioned way, you could just right click in there, just type in constant and it's going to be constant three vector. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this to the A slot here. And let's say, let's pick another random color. So maybe let's just do purple somewhere around there. And now you can start to see that we're already starting to get this glow. And if we wanna control the glow on here, we're gonna hold down the one key on our keyboard, left click, and that's gonna bring up a constant one vector. Now I'm gonna left click and bring this into the B slot. And now with the constant one vector selected, I could just type in maybe like 15. And that's gonna make it glow a lot more here. 
Now there's one more note, and this one is the important note. So again, shout out to Rabinowitz. He actually showed me this note, but it's gonna be a cloner parameter that we could connect to the alpha to bring everything together. So if I come down into my material graph and right click, I'm gonna just type in cloner and you should see cloner effector parameters. Again, this is new for 5.5. So I'm gonna left click on this and this is gonna bring up a ton of parameters that we could use to be able to change the color inside of our cloner. Now the easiest one to go by and the one that's in my example is the effector total weight. So if I left click and drop this into the alpha, now whenever we add an effector to our cloner, it's gonna take the weight of that cloner and it's gonna change out the color accordingly. So now we could click on save in the top left hand corner and we can minimize this and come back into this scene here. Now within our cloner, I'm gonna click on the default clone, which is just the cube there. And I'm gonna take that material and I'm gonna put that into the material slot. So remember our base color was green. So now what we're gonna do is add an effector to change everything out. So let's scroll this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna click on cloner in my outliner and in my details panel, I'm gonna scroll down and let's look for create length effector. I'm gonna click on this. And now we have an effector inside of our scene. Now, when I move it, you notice that we're now changing the color, but we can actually add a lot more effects to it to make it a lot more appealing. And if you don't wanna see this red grid every time we do something in our viewport, cause I don't wanna see that. A quick tip, if I come down here where it says toggle the grid on and off, I could turn that off. And now when I move around in my viewport, we're not gonna see that anymore. But let's add some effects to this just to make it a little bit more interesting. So if I come down here to where it says easing, instead of linear, let's just pick something else in here. Let's maybe go with this one right here in our expo. You can already see we're starting to get some really nice effects in there. And if you look close enough, you can see that we have our outer shell and we have our inner shell, which will be our radius. So if I take my outer radius and move this up a little bit, and then we could use our inner radius just to add some fall off on there as well. Now, as we start to move this in, you can see how this is starting to take effect. Now for our mode down here, inside of our details panel, instead of offset, maybe let's come down here and use noise. Then we could change the strength down here. So where's this scale strength? Let's actually move this down all the way down to zero. And now as we start to move it in, that's how we were getting that effect before. So let me actually move around in here so we can see it a little bit better. But now you can start to see how we're starting to get that effect to make the cubes go in as we're moving this through. We can make the outside radius a little bit larger so it engulfs the entire thing there. So there we go. Now we're getting some cool effects. But you might be wondering why we're not seeing the glow, just how it was inside my example. There's a couple of reasons why. So if I come over here to where we have the post-process volume, I'm going to left click on this. And then down here where it says bloom, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on method. And I'm going to turn up the intensity. You can start to see we're going to get some glows in here. But instead of standard, I'm going to click on convolution. And I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. So maybe let's turn it up to like five. And you can start to see we're getting like this crazy lens flare in here. But we can actually turn that off if we come down here to where it says lens flare. Come down here to intensity. Put it on zero. And now we're only getting the glow effect out of there. But we're still not getting that like the hot glow that we've seen before in my example. So if I come back in here inside of my cloner, maybe let's crank this up to like 35. And then once we hit save, let's minimize it. So now we're starting to see how we're getting that hot glow in there. So it's just a matter of just going in, playing with your post prize volume till you get something that's to your liking. But that's really going to be the basis of the effect to be able to pull that out. So that cloner node that we showed you inside the materials, that's gonna be the most basic thing that you need there. And then from there, you can just go along and play with all the different indexes that you see inside of here. But this is probably the most important one to be able to get that effect to change the colors out inside of your cloner. Now put this example up on Gunrope just in case anybody wants to actually take this original one because this is the one I actually spent a lot more time on just figuring stuff out. So if you look over here inside my effectors, I have my top effector. I have another one that has, um, if I come down here, has some noise in there that's changing the location out. Then I have a third effector here that's just doing offset. So I actually stack the effectors on top of each other. And I have this one as the parent, so they all move in unison. So again, check out my Gumroad. I'll put this up there absolutely free for anybody that wants to go through and just backward engineer it.
But hopefully this helped everybody out. I know this was one of those tutorials people have been asking me a few weeks on how to do. So hopefully this will help you guys get started so you can come up and make some cool motion graphics. So if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.